this is SOLIDWORKS Electrical Schematic Design for the 21st Century. And today we'll be going over a deep dive into SOLIDWORKS Electrical, but a few um, kind of housekeeping uh, things, and covered a little bit about it already. So you have your go-to webinar interface. If you're familiar with it already, then you're, you're good to go. But um, on the webinar interface, you can click on those two arrows over there. That will minimize the window. Um, and anytime you have some kind of audio issues, you can kind of switch in between your mic and then also uh, calling in from a telephone. That's your control panel. You'll also see a spot for questions. So in the meantime, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put it in there. It'll populate. Um, I don't think I have another panelist with me right now, so I'll try to kind of answer either towards the end. We do have actually quite a quite a bit of information to cover, so I can keep the cover at the end. Um, we can follow up with you, or I can, if it's a quick and easy one, I can address it right there. Okay. So, but feel free to put in questions, and we'll get those answered for you. Um, audio, we kind of talked about that. Everyone can hear me, but. Um, everyone's just automatically muted just to minimize noise, especially with a, a webinar this size. So questions can be asked through the um, question panel. And if again, if uh, you have any audio issues, try checking um, your speakers, um, phone, and things like that, those options. So visibility, um, if you can't see the whole screen um, on the GoToWebinar viewer window, on the bottom, there will be like a, a scale to fit or um, use a full screen option. Then you can go ahead and tack on those and then access those. And then questions and help. Um, if you do any need any help and support, um, feel free to contact us here. You can kind of screenshot this and I can show this again. All right. So let's kind of dive into the program here. So what I want to do is I want to look at our SOLIDWORKS electrical schematic design. And we're going to talk about the key benefits of SOLIDWORKS Electrical. Mainly, those are going to be um, faster schematic creation with fewer errors, easy data reuse and new content setup, rapid changes, and then also then outputting that to professional and accurate final documentation. So the first thing, it's kind of dived up into three individual sections. The first section, we're going to talk about intelligent drawing tools. So creating the schematics very quickly, right, with fewer errors. Um, we're looking to look at our symbols and our components to um, look through them faster. Then we're going to create automatic device tags and wire numbers, and then also automate our reporting and then error checking too. Okay, so diving into our program, here I actually have a, a package sorting system started up already. So we're going to design a package sorting system. Right? We're, we're going to start off with a single conveyor and we're going to move packages from point A to point B, for example. And later on, what we'll do is we'll add some sensors, pneumatics, and additional conveyors that'll allow us to sort the packages. So in here, we just have three documents in here initially. Right? We have a cover page. Um, we have a spot for where our power schematic is going to go, which we're going to start off with first. And then we also have one for our control schematic. So just diving into our power schematic, I'm going to start off with the three-phase power. Right? We're going to begin by doing the free phase down on the side of the, of the page, just using our multiple wires. So we have the ability to choose from our wire style selectors. You can create your own. You can have the ones that are already preset there for you, right, using our manager. You can kind of customize this to specifically your, um, your specific project. So in this one, I'm gonna go ahead and draw my wires in, draw them down, and then also draw it a horizontal branch okay and notice that if I click on my spacebar I can invert my phase right if needed and then I can also have it draw orthogonal wires you know obviously parallel orthogonal if I needed to invert those and draw some bends in or invert those phases I can also do that too right this will also be done with the toggle over here on the left hand side so once that's done what I want to do is I have an extensive library of components. And then there's a search capability that we have to look through those components. So when we talk about our symbols, um, you can sort it out by your different categories. But in this one, say I want to look for like a motor. I can type in motor and anything that has motor in the description is going to pop up. So say I find the one that I want. What I want to do is just double click on it. 
get my symbol orientation correct. And notice how when I move over different lines, it's going to want to try to attach to it and then also align to it, right? And you can see how one of the things that I like about SolidWorks Electrical is that you can I can put on this line. Notice I'm not putting it right at the end of it, but I'm kind of truncating a little bit just to make sure they connect up. By putting it here, what it'll automatically do once I um, open up the symbol properties window and press OK, it will truncate those wires, right? And it'll trim it kind of to the extent of my um, to my motor. So they're not excess wires I have to get rid of. It's going to trim it out automatically for me, okay? In addition, say we want to bring in some fuse disconnectors. So this is going to help the entire system from overloading. So say I want to bring in some disconnectors. I'm going to just prop these ones in. Grab these ones here. And these are going to go on my vertical branch. We have, we're going to bring in some normally open power contacts that allows us to turn the system on and off. And then once again, you can kind of see how it aligns specifically with my wires. And then it also breaks it up. So you can see right here, it'll break it up now into individually. I have a red wire here, a red wire over here. So it trims it up to two. So if I needed to remove any excess, I can do that. And then also to protect my motor that I added in, I'm going to bring in a circuit breaker. Okay, I want to go ahead and bring in a three pole magneto thermal circuit breaker and just pop that in. Now say we have that. And right now, if I look on my left hand side in our documents window, there's a components. And these components kind of give us an outline of where all my individual components are located. So right now we're in the main electrical enclosure. But actually I want the motor to be in the conveyor. So to put that in there in that location, I can um, assign it individually. But say most of my components I do want in the main electrical enclosure, but just this motor I want to be in a different location. So what I can do is create a location outline meaning that this is just going to put like a um, an outline around specific component or components to identify that, for example, this is going to be in the conveyor. So it's going to ask me, do I want to change the component location? I will. And you can see it identifies this as L2 conveyors. Okay. So we'd like to connect our contactor to our motor through terminals. So we're going to go ahead and insert some of our terminals in here. So we'll go and insert some terminals. Draw out a terminal strip. Okay, we can always edit some of the you know geometry. Say we can lengthen, shorten if we need to. And now what I want to do is we've kind of assigned some of our symbols, but now let's actually add the manufacturer part information in, right? So we do that by let's say we'll want to work on let's go to the motor first since that's the first one we added in. It's as simple as going into our component and we want to assign a manufacturer part to it. Okay, so just a right click, then it's going to pull up my manufacturer part selection window. And then from here, I can begin searching through our database. Um, for example, this is going to be a Leroy Stomer three phase motor that I want to bring in. It has its circuits here on the right hand side. And then it automatically populates. And notice how the, the data now has, uh, uh, the symbol now has the data information in there. Right, it'll automatically populate, as opposed to us having to manually type it in. It kind of saves you that time and saves you the the fact that um, uh, less error prone. Right. So doing the same for all the rest of my components, they will work on the the fuse next. Just going kind of individually with how we had inserted this. We're going to insert a manufacturer part for our fuse disconnector. We'll do one for our circuit breakers as well. Add that in. And then we'll have our contactor. And because this one actually has different classes and categories, uh, in this case we're in the power, just to show you some of the different classes that we have, right? These are all the different, you know, different orders and different folders. 
um, components. For example, I'm looking both in the contact or relays. So looking here, right, I can go ahead and identify the, the contact or relay that I want from my our specific manufacturer, in this case the SWST, to bring that in. Okay, so we got our contactors, um, we did our motors, and at this point, um, SolidWorks Electrical has design rule checks to um, really kind of check our project as we go. So where we would find that is in our project and we go to design rule check. Okay, so when we go here, we're going to actually look at the, the first few um, two of our design rules that we need to look at. The first one is components with missing manufacturer parts. So I move this over here to the right hand side. You can see it's actually my terminals, uh, terminals that haven't been assigned manufacturer parts. So if there was like the motor I didn't assign or the circuit breaker, it would appear here too. Also, wires without marks. So in this case, we haven't numbered our wires yet. So it's just indicating which wires don't have the marks on there, right, um, to make sure that you have all those assigned. So we're going to work on the second one first. So that's a really simple process. You just go to process and number those wires. Okay, it's going to ask us, do you want to add those in? And it's as simple as that. So we number those wires. Later on, we'll, we'll add in some additional ones too. And now working on the first issue. The first issue was the terminal strips don't have manufacturer parts. Right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our terminal strip and we're going to edit it. So what's nice is this has a terminal strip editor. And in this window, um, I can work on specifically all my terminals at one time because each one they could have different manufacturer parts. But say I wanted to assign all of them to be the same one. So here I can find in my manufacturer. Let's go ahead and assign this is going to be to our Wago 2001-1201 and I want that assigned to be all of my terminals, right? And then while we're here, instead of using um, four wires to connect, we're just going to assign a single cable to this. So we're going to click on all my cables and let's go ahead and associate some cable cores. So if I have an available cable in here, all I have to do is just select the cable and associate it with the wires that we have the ones that don't have the cable cords. So I'm going to add in a new cable. So again, kind of similar to our manufacturer database and then also our symbols. What I want to do is look for the specific wire type that I'm, I'm looking for. So my power, I'm looking for my size standard. I'm just going to be my gauge. I want to go ahead and pull in a 14 uh, gauge in here for this uh, specific cable. So I'll add that in, kind of like we did our manufacturer parts. And individually, those have our wires too. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that these are going to line up properly. So my green and yellow, that I want it to be my, my protection on the bottom. So we'll highlight, and then we'll highlight these ones as well. Right, I can do them individually, but I can also just highlight all of it and then associate them correctly. So I'm associating that cable, and then now I have that W1 in there, that 14 gauge cable. We can also generate our drawings. So this is a very um, quick process. You can quickly output the terminal strip drawings in, a, in literally a few clicks, then have it done automatically for you. So here, if I press OK, let me move this one over. Literally, that's done. So it's all generated for me already, and it's generating out a report. So if I look at my, my, uh, my page, there's this X1. So after we did the terminal strip drawing, I can double click on this, and this is going to get updated as we add more and more components. But you can see the cable, you can see um, um, on the left hand side, you can see our terminals, um, our cable that's connected to it, and then also what it's connected to on the right hand side, in this case, our, to our motor. Right? Excellent. So at this point, we'll kind of carry on and let's bring in our power supply. So the motor power starter circuit is done. Now we just need a way to open and close the power contacts to turn the, the motor on and off. So now working um, just kind of back in our power. Um, before that, though, before we do anything, I'll need to bring in a power supply. And to save some time, if we've done it already, and you know the same thing goes for you, if you've done something already, what you can do is you can utilize our macros. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you we're going to bring it in. And then later on, I'll show you um, exactly how we create the macro. It's really simple. 
I'm going to go into my power supply. And this power supply circuit is one that we've done with Freddy in like a previous project. All I need to do is literally left click and just drag it in. All right, it's that simple. So it's just like a, um, a copy and paste. So once I drag it in to kind of the location where I want it to go, drop it in, and then I have my circuits in there, right? And I can rearrange um, any of the anything that I need to, right? So next, so once we have the, the power supply in, right, we'll talk again about the macros, we want to work on our control circuit. So for our control circuit, I'm going to start off with a simple ladder, okay? And we're just going to begin drawing this out. We'll use our specific wires. This is going to be 18 gauge, and we're just going to do one line for now. And I'm just going to sketch out a rectangle, like so, using my crosshairs to line up my lines. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in one of the top wire right here. And I'm just going to left click and drag it down. And that's going to allow me to create a ladder. Okay. Well, I missed it a little bit. So let me drag that one down again. There we are. All right. We have our connection points. So now, um, going into our control circuit, right? Let's bring in, for example, a, uh, a push button, normally open push button. This is going to help us start up the motor. So I'll bring in a push button. Again, just searching through our database, easiest way. I'll grab in a normally open push button, right? Double click and drag that in. And then we'll as a stop switch, right, we're going to add in a normally close push button as well. All right, just double click, add that in. And so we've not primarily added the, the symbols on the right hand side, right? So if there's a component that's been added in already, for example, remember our, our K1, our contactor, and say I want to refer to it in my my control circuit. What I can do is I can go to my K1, I can look through my components, and I can right click and then go here to insert symbol. It's going to ask me, do you want to insert the, the symbol from your manufacturer part circuits? And I do. And what it's going to open it up is it's going to say select your circuit from, do you want it to be a relay coil or your normally open contact? So say we'll open up the relay coil first and we'll bring that one in. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and place the relay coil to the right of my normally open push button. And then while we're here, we'll also bring in the other component from there as well, our normally open contact. Okay, because we have a, mom uh, a momentary push button right now, but let's insert this contact uh, to kind of keep it uh, in there. We're going to line it up with our normally open push button Okay, and place that one in there. So we want our push button to be illuminated, so we'll include an indicator. So we'll go ahead and grab in an indicator symbol. Line that up with our both our relay coil. Oh, I'm sorry. Our uh, yeah, our relay coil and then our contact. So I'll pop this one in. And then from here, what I want to do is I want to assign both my light, the indicator that I just um, brought in, and then I also want this normally open push button. I want them assigned to be S1 because we want the light to be a part of the switch. So to assign a component to, to make sure that they're the same, all I have to do is just right click and assign the component and then just choose the one it's going to be. In this case, I want both of those to be part of my S1. You can see how it now puts the indicator under my push button. So then anything information will populate that's under S1 will populate in both, right? So now, say I want to, instead of drawing in another wire up here to, to line these up, I can just reuse the one that I have on the bottom. I can either copy it or I can just drag it up 
and I know that I'm supposed to connect up those two there, right? It Once again, it breaks up the connection points as I need them to. And at the same time, um, say I want to create some, um, some additional vertical wires here. I can draw them in again, or I can remember the fact that I can copy these. So uh, a copy is as simple as a control C and a control V to copy and paste. You can also drag these as well. Okay, so I have one there. Um, say I want to put one, two between my contactors and then also my lights there. Okay, and again, by putting in those lines, it now treats them as separate. So I don't have to necessarily do any trimming. I don't have to worry about this one over here. So if I just want to delete it, we can go ahead and just simply select it and then delete any additional wires, you know, to trim out things that we don't need. Okay, so we got our components in there. Now, kind of going to that same process. We insert our symbols, we have our wires in there, and now let's do the manufacture part information. So for my S2, we'll go ahead and pop in our S2 to assign, again, remember our components, just um, for our reference, we'll pop it in, we'll look for our manufacturer part that we're looking for, bring that in, right? We can also search from specifically manufacturer, uh, if you know what the reference is going to be, or also how many circuits, right, you can then um, filter out from that area too, especially if your database is really large. Our S1s, we'll go ahead and we don't have to do um, select both of them because they're the same, they're referencing the same component. Um, as I change one, for example, we'll go ahead and select this manufacturer part information. You can see it populates in both. Now on the right hand side, we want the wire style to match those coming in from the power supply. So I want to replace this wire. And I want to replace the wire through the echo potential to the components. So I'm going to select my wire and then let's go ahead and just do a replace. Okay, and I'm going to go through my echo potential. And then from here, I can choose which wire I want to replace it with. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and select our ground. Select our control, and then replaces the wires to that echo potential in there. Excellent. So at this point, right, we've added new wires, added new um, components in here. Let's go ahead and number our wires. So we'll go to number new wires without affecting the existing ones, right? We got these ones in there. So now we want to uh, connect up our power supply to the power control circuit. Um, one thing I want to point out to you on the right hand side, it automatically creates a cross reference for me, right? Especially when we have different schematics. Um, what this allows me to do is I can see specifically, for example, our, our circuits and how things are, um, are attached to it. But I can also see which page. So how this goes is it says page and then your row. So for example, where I would find this uh, connection is page three, row four, and then these subsequent ones will be on page two, row five. Okay, so it shows you where it is, and again, we'll refer to this later on. So now we have two schematics. How do they connect up to one another? Um, we're not including the, the terminal strip drawing. So how do I connect up my power and my control? So we're going to use what we call our origin destination arrows. So I'm going to top in my uh, project. I'll go to origin destination arrows, and what it does, it pulls up two schematics, right? Because you have the, those are the two that we're working with. And when I look it up, what I'm going to go is my single insertion, and I'm going to connect up one with the other. So in this case, to my uh, my power supply, I want to connect it to the control circuit, right? And notice how I can only select like similar wires. So for example, I'm clicking on the top wire here. I can only select this one over here. If I try to attach it over here, notice that it doesn't even highlight for me. Okay, let me zoom in over here. Notice how this one's showing up in green, but this one doesn't because it doesn't allow me to connect mismatched wires. Only identical wire types. So if I click one there, and then also one down here on the bottom, I can obviously select up those two to attach it. Okay. So I'm selecting up the power supply and then connecting those grounds together. But what you'll see is these little blue dots, okay? 
These blue dots represent that there's an equipotential conflict here. Basically, I'm shorting out these wires. This happens anytime two wires with two different numbers are connected directly to each other. Unfortunately, the, the answer to, to solve it is really simple. All I have to do is just right click on it, and then I want to solve the equipotential conflict. And I've got to decide basically, hey, which one is this one supposed to be? Right? So right now it's 202. I actually want it to be 203. And you can see the conflict goes away. Same thing over here. It's going to be between my ground one and my ground two. Okay, so selecting my wire to solve, and this is going to be my ground one. Okay, because before the other ones are ground one. Excellent. So popping into my PowerPoint, let's go ahead and do some a little review. So faster schematic uh, creation, right, with fewer errors. So in the first section, we've shown how kind of SOLIDWORKS Electrical helps designers rapidly create schematics, right? Um, using efficient wire creation tools, um, we can obviously define those um, with our wire numbers and wire marks. Um, our search tools and our custom palettes help us define the symbols that we need quickly, right? With a very extensive component library. And then we can kind of choose the best one that we want and that we need for our project. Um, our errors and rule checks, creating our terminal strip drawings but just by clicking on one button to generate those. And then automated reporting and removing some of the, the kind of the time consuming and error prone aspects of when we create those documentation. Right, so creating the wires and creating the components that we need to. Excellent. So with that said, Next thing we're going to do is we're going to focus on the easy data and reuse of new components and setup. So we'll talk about copy and pasting with automatic, automatic marking. We'll reuse our circuit creation. So we talked it a little bit on it when we did macros. And we're going to add new symbols and components as we go. So something that hasn't been defined yet, we'll use what we call a black box to help us define that. Now, going back into our electrical schematic, right? We want to now add in two more conveyors, and then we'll add in some sensors and pneumatics to divert those packages to the conveyors. So working in my power schematic, we're going to do this by just copying and pasting the one that we did earlier, right? the very first one we did that we worked on. So I can hold now um, just Windows select this, Control C, copy, and Control V. Right? So you just copy and paste. back onto our branch, our vertical branch. And then obviously when I'm copying and pasting, um, each one of these also is creating new additional components, right? Terminal strips, um, additional contactors as we need to. Now, if we're gonna use this again on different multiple projects, kind of like we did with our um, power supply, then we can save this as a macro so we can use it in other projects. And we do that by going to our macros. And I'm gonna go into, let's say my motor start. See, I can actually have one in here already from our previous project. So I'm going to delete it, delete this macro in from here. Simple, just go permanently. And I'm going to do the same thing. Instead of doing a copy and paste, go ahead and window select all of this. Make sure I grab everything. Oh, include my motor too. That's important. There you go. So now that I have all my components, right? What happens is all I have to do is instead of copying and pasting, I'm just going to left click and drag that into my window, whatever kind of um, you know section that I want it to be in. And then what it's going to ask me to do is name that macro. So I'll call it 112, which is just for um, for future reference. Press OK, and I just put that in there. And then obviously you kind of saw how it works. I just left click and then you just bring it back to, obviously if it's in a different project, then you'll, um, you'll always have access to it. So you can just bring that in again. Okay. Now, um, my motors, they're actually all in the same location. So I'm gonna take that outline. I don't have to redo it. All I have to do is just extend it out so that it's covering all my motors. Right, because I want all the motors to be in my conveyor. Now, I want to keep the, the system very simple. 
Um, we want to control all the motors from the same start and same stop button. Uh, let me actually number number of my new wires real quick since we're here right we'll number our new wires so we have those in there there we go so um going back to what i was talking about um i want the same start and same stop buttons so we're going to assign all the contactors here instead of k1 k2 and k3 i want them all to be k1 so i'll select all of them and we'll go ahead and assign these to our k1 Okay. Now, when we do that, though, you'll actually see if I go in my control schematic. Now, remember when we're talking about our cross-reference, right? Green is good, but then whenever you see red, it's always kind of cause for alarm, right? So, um, when you notice how it's red, um, this is telling me that K1 doesn't have those contacts. So, what does that mean? I can either search my library for a device that has nine no, normally open power contacts, or you can add an auxiliary device. So for example, I want to add in an auxiliary component that has those contacts. So here, while we're still here, right, we're looking at our K1. If I go ahead and go to, let me show you my symbol properties real quick, what it's talking about is those initially were okay, but before, then I added in the other, the K2 and K3 assigned as my K1 then those got red as well because those didn't have um, they didn't bring any manufacturer part information with them so to um, to solve it all i have to do is just add an auxiliary part so i'm going to go to assign a manufacturer part to all my selected components and in this case instead of being base i'm looking for an auxiliary component our power contactor okay we'll bring that one into and notice how as i bring it in when i highlight it all those go from red to green because that auxiliary power contactor has those additional circuits that we need okay so again we can either find out switch out some other um, contacts find another, another um, part or then add in an auxiliary part as we did here so now that all three conveyors are powered right let's add in some sensors and then pneumatic devices so in my control schematic, we're going to start by bringing in a micro microcontroller. So we actually have one done for us already in our command here. So in our macros, we'll just left click and drag it in. And I want to actually connect it up with my, my pink wire up top. So I'll go ahead and line those up like so. And then if I need to just shorten my ground over here I can also just shorten this as we need to because I then also want to connect up those two as well so I'll go to my origin destination even though they're on the same page right it's a pretty simple process all I need to do is just go into my insertion up top and then down here to the bottom and you can see here no echo potential conflict all right so I want to now drop in our three wire sensor switch so we're going to go to our symbols and we'll go to three wire drag it in orient it correctly and i'm going to just going to um line it up with our kind of our inputs from our microcontroller here and then i'm going to draw in my wires so I'll draw a single wire, line wire from here to the input of my microcontroller. And then up top, we'll do the same thing on the left. And then I can shake this wire, right? And I can copy it. And what's great is as I copy it, I'm just going to do, let's do a control drag here. So hold down control and drag that wire once I get it. Oh, let me uh, copy and paste this one. So copy and paste. All right, line up that wire. And as I line up, it doesn't give me that full length again because it sees that symbol it um, kind of trims off the rest of it, right? So I have those wires in. And I'm also going to include some terminals in here. So I just quickly saw some terminals on the left-hand side, right? It's going to um, use a terminal strip inside the cabinet 
allows me to catch uh, a cable to those sensors. One on here, and then also one here on the right-hand side. That's going to be into our X2. Okay. Now we'll move this over here slightly. And kind of at this point, let's um, apply, let's, let's assign some uh, manufacturer part to this, to our terminals. So we'll go to my X2, and then we'll um, go back to edit our terminal strip. Again, we'll do all three of them. So we'll assign a manufacturer part to this. And we'll pop in and let's grab our specific manufacturer that we're looking for. We'll do a small terminal for all of it. Okay. And then for our cables, we'll do the same. Go ahead and add in a cable if we don't have any. We're looking for a control this time as my type. And the size is going to be gauge as well. And then bring in that, in this case, my 18 gauge. Then we'll connect these up. Our, my yellow is going to go to my output terminal here. And then our red is going to go to my other output on the other end. And my black is going to go to my ground. So you can see how we can do them individually too, right? So I have those in there. So at this point, um, I can repeat the process for my sensors, but the thing is we need five more. Um, and why do that if we can just simply, we can do a macro, of course, or you can just copy and paste. So I can copy and then paste and then line up those as we need to. And if I need to just move my um, kind of my X2 around so it's a little bit easier for us to read because they're kind of going to be stacked onto one another, I can also just copy and paste because there's actually going to be two more sets. of So in this case, four more. So I can just copy those two, line them up with my inputs, and then one more. Okay, so again, because we did all the work already, we can go ahead and just put it on all those sensors, right? We have them in our cables, our terminal strips, um, all that information that we need to. If we want to make this a little bit uh, neater, what we can do is we can pop into our terminal strip drawing. Let's go ahead and we'll go into here. We'll edit our terminal strip. And then as we do it, we can generate our drawings, but um, I'm going to do the generate drawings just to show you kind of all my X2 here. It's kind of a dialogue to, to generate it. And what we're going to see is uh, we'll have our terminal strip drawings, but there's a lot of information, right? We're actually going to have to break it up into two pages. And if I wanted to actually make it a little bit neater, what I can do is create some, some bridges. Okay, so it just basically ties my, uh, my terminals together for me. Okay, so we'll wait this one to generate. And then let me actually minim, uh, I mean, minim, move this one over here. So our terminal strip drawings, you can see over here, I have two of them. And they actually also split them. Um, kind of in a weird way. So this one's like a W6 is on here, but actually W6 is on the other side too. So you can see on the left hand side has 203, 203 ground, 203, right? So a lot of um, information, but if I want to make it a little bit neater, what I actually, actually can do is I can tie my terminals together electrically. So, and I can do that by um, clicking on my grounds. So I can select my grounds, just control select all of them, and then create a bridge. You can see it kind of shortens it out there. Then the 203, I can do the same thing, especially if they're kind of um, the same. Right, so it ties it all together. You can see how now I have my W4, now my W5, W6, W7, 8. Um, say I want to do, you know, 3 and 3 on each side. I can add a page break afterwards, like this, to have it sort, you know, how many more equally, so it's a little bit better, and then we can generate those drawings. Okay, so we can modify, you know, our terminal strip drawings to show us exactly the information that we want. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is, it turns out we have a brand new manifold, right, that's not in my parts library. And we're going to use that to control my cylinders. 
but I don't have a symbol that um, has been done already for us to represent it. So what we're going to use is we're going to use a black box. Okay, let me take a look at the terminal strip drawings real quick. So you can see how they're redone. W6, and then we have three each. Right, and it shortens it out, shortens it out, so it's much easier to see. Okay, you don't have to create those bridges if you don't want to. Right, it's just that additional step, but it makes uh, the terminal strip drawing a little bit cleaner. So I want to now create a black box, and that's going to represent our manifold. So we're going to insert a black box and go ahead and just draw it out. And then I can assign, for example, information in here. Um, we'll pop into our manufacturer part information. I can go to add manually because we haven't done one here for us already. So this is doing it on the fly, right? You don't necessarily always have to have it in the database first to, to do it. You can always decide that, hey, you know what, I need one now, then create it from scratch. Okay, you can assign what the manufacturer is going to be, um, what the, the class is going to be in. It's going to be a pneumatic, right? I have a base in there. We'll press OK. We'll add that in. We have some of our circuits. So if I wanted to edit some of my circuits, right, um, I can delete them if there's anything existing. I can add in how many circuits, and per each circuit, how many terminals there are, right? So I have all these ones in there. I can select what they're the first ones, for example, if there's going to be eight, now I want the first four to be my PLC inputs, and then the last four to be hydraulic inputs and outputs. Um, and then if I wanted to, I can also just assign all of them their marks. So over here, I can say this one's like in, and this one's two, three, and then four. And you can see how it populates the terminal marks. And then we'll do the same thing for my out. Zero, one here, two, three, oop, that one's three, and then four. There we are. Press OK. So we got those in there. Um, and it's going to ask me, do you want to update the catalog or do you want to modify this component? So if I update the catalog, that means it's always going to be in there. Right, it's going to add it in there so I don't have to recreate it again. So I don't have to do that manifold again. Right? Um, in this case, I'm just going to modify this component. But in this, if you were to do this, then you want to add it to your catalog. And I'm going to press OK. And now I want to insert our two pneumatic cylinders. Our pneumatic devices are here. I'm going to left click and literally just drag it in like we did in all their other macros. Okay, so just literally drag and then drop it in to place. So with that, right, what I want to do now is connect up the PLC outputs to the black box. So our PLC, the microcontroller is here, and then our PLC, which is our manifold that we're going to connect up. So we're going to go to my wires, and instead of having to draw four individual wires, we'll do four wires that are spaced out, you know, about like half, half apart. So I'll left click, I'll connect up my, my output from my microcontroller, left click, and then draw two. My manifold. Then I'm going to right click and update my black box. And when I do, you can see how it numbers those connection points, right? One through eight. So with those, remember how I kind of defined my inputs and outputs? I can go into my black box and I go to my manufacturer part circuits and kind of spend some time identifying those terminal numbers, right? Instead of being one through eight, I like there to be in one, two, three, four, out one through four. So I just need to replace the um, drag and drop these part specific data onto my um, black box connection points. So I'll click yes. And I'm getting this message just because the, the, um, the type, for example, at the black box connection isn't matching up with it. So if you actually read it, it says circuit types they're different. Do you want to act? Are they supposed to be the same? In this case, they are, right? Just because I can have my black box be really anything that I want it to be. So in this case, I have, you know, hydraulic and pneumatic. I got one here. And just drag and drop. Press OK. And now instead of one through eight, I have my inputs here on the left hand side and then my outputs here on the right hand side. 
And then like our motors, my sensors and my cylinders on the conveyor, um, or my sensors and my cylinders should be on the conveyor. So we'll put this and change the locations to be in my conveyors. And we'll do the same thing for my, oh, let me grab a location outline here. to be on the conveyors. All right. So popping back into our PowerPoint. I know we're kind of getting a little close on time here. So we saw how we can reuse data with uh, traditional copy and paste, right, as if we're in the same project. But if we're in across multiple projects and the things that we've done before, then we can use macros. Um, we can save time there. We can leverage things that we've done already. Right? Especially if you've done it already and there are things that are similar across different projects, right? different electrical projects, we can reuse it. We can add in auxiliary devices. Um, we talked about how to bring in black boxes for components that we wanted to really design on the fly. But then um, not have to worry about do I have to design it first and then bring it in. You can do it reverse in your project and you want to then design it. And then afterwards, you can add it to your catalog. So going forward, you don't have to redesign it every single time, right? Last thing, we'll talk about um, changes and then professional documentation. So we'll create our reports. We'll do some anything to our documentation layout, and then we're going to output to like a PDF. But we're going to start off by actually doing a 2D cabinet layout. Okay. So if this is something that you're going to be creating. We're going to uh, to create a 2D cabinet layout to show us um, how where all of our uh, components are going to be located, and we do that by going to our project. We'll go to actually our process. We'll go to our cabinet layout, and it's going to ask us which do we want to do the cabinet layout for, right? In this case, we're not going to do the conveyor. We're just going to do the main electrical enclosure. So I'll press OK. And you can see it creates this one for us. And to save kind of some space on the right hand side over here, I'm going to change my scale. Let's just change the scale to be one to five. So it's going to make everything a little bit larger for us. Okay. I'll apply those changes. And then now, oh, let me uh, make sure I get one to five. Let me make sure it accepts my one to five first. Press OK. There we go. Oh, oh, that's weird. One to five. Except. Do it one more time. Press OK. Huh, maybe let's change it after the fact, huh? Okay. So uh, we'll go to our cabinet layout. The uh, first thing I want to do is I want to select my location I want to add my cabinet for. So I'm going to add in a cabinet. We'll grab in our manufacturer information. We're going to look at a 1055 for my reference. And I want to bring in these. It's a compact enclosure. And then a mounting plate. These are where they're going to go. So we're going to bring in our mounting plate. It's going to go on the right-hand side over here. And then we'll bring in that mounting plate. So enclosure on the right hand side. Then we'll bring in the mounting plate. So it's as simple as insert as cabinet. And then bring that in. Okay. Well now let's see if we can uh increase the, the size here to be one to five. Oh, huh, interesting. It's not letting me select it. Ah, that's okay. So we'll kind of work with our, our zoomed in version here. Okay, so in this cabinet, right, what do we want? I want all of our components on the right hand side or cabinet layout. What's great about this is it shows us kind of like a list view of all the components I want to insert in. Later on, we'll do this hide already inserted components of ones that we want to insert eventually. So we're going to bring in the fuse disconnector. We'll right click and then literally just go ahead and insert. We'll bring in our fuse disconnector. And it's going to go over here. I'm going to save some room up top for my uh, my ducts and then also my rails. And then we'll bring in our circuit breakers. So I can bring in multiple components at one time, just doing a little shift select. You can also choose the order, right? 
um, how they're going to be inserted and if there's going to be any kind of space between them. So say, for example, I want there to be like, let's say, one inch between them. So go to the right. We'll place one in here. We'll bring in our power supply. And we'll line those up. And then our second row, our micro, we're going to put in our microcontroller. So our PLC right, that we've brought in. And then also our base contactor and the auxiliary contacts. So it's right click, insert. And these ones have two. Right, so I'll place this one in. And then my third row, what I'm going to do is this at this point, if you click on hide already inserted components, right, and just kind of flip through, you can see the rest of them. My S1, my S2 are my sensors, which you'll see for the, uh, the right hand side. And I'm going to insert my J1. That's going to be our manifold. So I'll insert the manifold here. And my X1. Okay, go ahead and let me insert my terminal strips. And we'll go to the right. It's just all my terminal strips, so I don't have to do them individually. It's kind of like a mass insert. And then we'll do the one on this side. Okay, so we have our components, three rows. And to help with my wiring, right, where they're going to specifically go, we're going to go into our add ducts. So we'll add in our ducts, and my ducts are going to be to my 6200. Grab one of those, bring that in, and then I can resize it as I need to. Okay. And then I'm just going to copy and paste this. Copy and then paste. We'll do one here, and then one more right around here. Okay. Well, we'll bring our terminal strips. That's good. Let's see if we move this one up just a little bit. Oh, that's good. Okay. And then we have our, we can also include a, uh, a vertical duct here as well. We'll go to our vertical duct. This is going to be 36200. And this is going to be change its orientation. So it's going to be vertical. Okay. And then add in our rails. So we're going to add in a rail. This is going to be 3486. Add that in as well. Change its orientation. So this rail will help us with our power supply as well as our circuit breakers. And there's also going to be the same thing over here. And copy and paste this. And as you can see, it's the, the sizing is going to be um, a little off. Right, copy and pasted it. So what we have is the ability to update rails or ducts. So I can click on this update rails or ducts and I can size it down accordingly, right? Kind of like how we did when we just first bring it in. So we'll add in um, a couple more rails. So I'll pop this one in, 0, 3, 4, 8, 6. And we'll have one that goes across. And we'll go ahead and copy and paste this. Excellent. Now you can see that obviously the rails are going above my components because I inserted them afterwards, right? So what I want to do is I'm actually going to say move below entity. And I'm going to select those. Oh, not that one. Let's do that again. So let me select here I just kind of like pre-selecting sometimes so select all of them my rails so I got four in here and I'll say move below entity and my reference object 
is going to be, let's say let's use a fuse disconnector because that's the first one we added in. And now you can see how it puts the rail below it. Okay. And then last thing we have is our sensors. So we'll just pop in our sensors last. We'll do both of them here. We'll insert. And I'm going to do this vertically. They're going to be three spaced apart. And then pop those in. Okay. So we have all that in there. Um, and just really you final cleanup with our documents. Um, we'll pop into our reports. Let's go ahead and generate our reports. So here are all the, the default reports. You have your bill of materials, um, your drawings list, anything else you additionally you want to add. For example, you know, I think we're missing maybe like a, um, a list of cable cores. So anything additionally you want to add in. Of course, you can always create your own as well. I go and add in a list of cable cores. And then when I go to generate my drawings, I can choose the ones that I want. So let's list of cable cores, group by reference, a drawings list would be good, build materials and say like list of wires. So when we do this, it's gonna automatically report, um, generate all those reports for us. So when we're doing that, afterwards we're going to see if we wanted to kind of ever move some of them around, I could put them in folders. Um, you can see here on my drawings list, and we can reorder these around as we need to. Okay. List of wires here. Um, if you do, um, I won't show this now just to kind of save on some time, because right, I know we're kind of right at that time. Um, I can move my uh, my documents around, and then obviously the number will, will change. Then what you would do is update your selected reports. That's going to change the order number. Okay. And then what will happen is if you want to, you can just go ahead and number your wires again. Um, also re any, renumber any marks that have changed. Okay. So that's thing is this basically updates to it. The last thing I wanted to show you is, you know, say you've done that and the output generally most people are kind of going to go, not going to have access to electrical. Right, especially if the electrical engineer um, is done with it. So wherever they're giving this to, you can output to DWG file and Excel. But one of the things I want to show you is just an, uh, a PDF. So say kind of all that work that we've done, right, starting from start to finish, I can choose my paper format. And let's go ahead and let me call this one my schematic. Save and print this. And then continue. And I just want to show you. Um, it um, what's great is that the PDF is really I mean at the at the end of the day you can hand this off to anybody right um, obviously the people that you wanted to, to go to but um, on the left hand side you can sort by specific schematics that you want to go to um, you have bookmarks to go to specific schematics and what's great is also there's there's certain things in terms of components it's kind of like your component tree where, you know, especially if someone's trying to figure out, well, where is this component? Where Where's that black box you're talking about? It can take me that specific com um, component. Right? It'll show me the cabinet layout. It'll show me the power contactor. So there's hyperlinks built in here. There's also in the origin destination arrows. Obviously, it's in the, the schematic program as well. But if I want to say, well, what this one is this one connected to? It'll take me, obviously, to that page. Okay. So this PDF is, there's intelligence built in right into it. Right? I can sort by components, contactors, and then also with my origin destination. Because I'm going from one page to the next, I'm trying to figure out, well, how is this all connected to one another? Okay, so that's going to be in your PDF. Excellent. So let's pop back into my PowerPoint to wrap this one up. So we talked about rapid changes and professional documentation. So we output it to a PDF, right? We have our reports, we have our wires, my list of cables. Um, all my documents, my cable list in there, and then also, if you're going to be doing it, you also have the ability to add in a 2D cabinet layout too. Okay. So wrapping it up, there's really um, key benefits of SolidWorks Electrical. It's talking about faster schematic creation, right? Um, reusing your data, especially if you've done it already, um, rapidly changing it, and then creating that professional uh, documentation. Really, it, it allows you to be more productive as you use it. Um, you have your rule checking tools and make sure the documentation is complete. And the goal is um, really to keep costs down, right? 
allow you to work faster, um, the designer, right? And then focus your effort really on designing the system instead of kind of having to proofread things um, and, you know, making sure that it's correct on one end and how it is on the other end. Obviously, you'll, you'll have that ability to just quickly go back and forth between everything, um, but creating that documentation uh, quickly. All right. So just one thing I want to point out um, for our webinar Wednesday, we have one another one coming up in June on the 27th, so that is in about a week. It's SolidWorks Visualize, so Advanced Tips and Tricks, another program we have for our, um, our render, so how to kind of streamline our render setup. And then any any questions you have, if you wanted to, to work on, if you had questions about electrical or, um, you, you know, say you want more information, you're interested in, you can talk to your local account representative. You can also contact us here at HawkridgeSys, info at HawkridgeSys.com. And for technical related questions, if you're on subscription with us, you can contact us there at those phone numbers and emails as well. Lastly, I wanted to thank everyone for coming and for listening in. Sorry we went over a little bit on time. I know it's possible to go to 11, 11.45, but I just want to make sure kind of we covered the scope of what electrical. It's not everything that I could do, obviously, but just really the core components and then just how it helps you um, kind of design faster, specifically in electrical schematic, and then how we can do it, go from like pen and paper to what we're seeing a lot of people do um, to now do doing in the uh, 21st century. Okay. Let me know if you have any questions, and if not, thank you everyone for attending.